Hello, welcome. My name is Dimitar and welcome to another session of Blender for Concept Architectural Design. In this session, we'll continue to look at subdivision modeling and refining it a little bit and see what else we can do with it. So here are a few models that started with a very simple base mesh and then we applied either wireframe modifier or apply the faces and then inserted them to create sort of a mesh, a cage in a way in which we also have glass. So let's take a look at how these are all created. So if we go create a mesh, scale it up a little bit and let's go into edit mode and extrude it and then we'll just get rid of we go to select the face, we get rid of this bottom face here, X faces. So here we have our cube. And now if we apply our modifier, just make sure you're in this icon here. Subdivision surface. And here we have something that resembles this here, which is our base mesh. Very simple to do. One thing I'll do is just scale this down a little bit. Right, so that's quite... That's looking quite alright already. I'll now duplicate this object, place it here, and how do we get from here to there, to this object right there? A couple of ways to do it. The first one, there's a modifier called wireframe, which essentially makes the whole object a wireframe. And we can vary the thickness to as much as we want. But the issue with this one is if we change the thickness, it sort of changes in all directions. We cannot just scale it along the U or the V axis of the faces. And also you can see it's blank because the original mesh is gone. We can change that actually by unchecking replace original. And if we change the material offset to one, and we go to the materials and we create two materials here, first one I already have a glass material we place that into it and you will see that it's quite similar already to, to, to the result that we have there so essentially what we did here is we have this is let's call it material 1, material 2 it doesn't matter what they are but if we go back into the modifiers the material offset just shifts the index of the material by 1 if we make it 0 you see that it's all sort of glass. If we make it one, it just uses the next material. Alright, so that's one way, but as I was saying, it doesn't quite look like that, does it? So, let's duplicate this object. Get rid of this wireframe. What I'll do now is I'll apply the mesh. So let's just understand what's happening here. This is our base mesh now. It has only... How many does it have? It has five faces. Now if I go back into object mode, click apply, and go back into edit mode, you see that the mesh became real, we just made it all real. Alright, so now if we select all the faces by toggling A to deselect anything and then pressing A to select everything, there's a wonderful command called inset faces, which we can press here, and it does its whole crazy thing, which is fine, you know, let it do whatever it does. What we can do is just edit it right after we click the command. So first, let's change depth to zero. And change the offset. Just to something like this. 0 0.02. Great. So now what we've done is we've offset every single face that we have on this object. Now to extrude it, we'll, we'll keep these faces selected, we'll say inset faces again, and again it's going to do its crazy thing, it doesn't matter, just click anywhere, right? We'll change this time the thickness to zero, and we'll change the depth. What that does is essentially it extrudes along the normals of each face. Now we can either go positive or negative with it. So let's go negative. And now we have our very nice wireframe mesh with, I, I, I believe, a much better defined edges than we get with the wireframe modifier. 
Right, so while we have these edges selected, these faces rather, let's just apply the glass material to them. Um, I'm gonna go into edit object mode really quickly, get rid of this. We can only get rid of material slots in object mode. Go back into edit mode. We'll leave that as is. And we'll create a new, a new slot in which we'll specify glass material and we must press assign we have to remember to press assign and what that does is it gives that material to all the assigned faces now if you want to actually see that if we go into the object tab and click transparency we go into edit mode see we can actually start to see that and here it is that's how this object was created that's pretty cool and again you know we can change the width by any way we want. And let's just compare these two. You see this here is just a simple wedge, a wireframe that it sort of extrudes in all sides in a not very smart way. And here we're able to create the geometry a little bit better with the inset tool. Right, so that's starting with this base mesh and then we can go to Dagrid. So how do we do that? If you click and edit this object you can see it still has the same base mesh. So if I select this one that we just created, duplicate it by clicking Shift D, I'll just move it over here. And there's a wonderful modifier, which is called Decimate. And if we click Unsubdivide and change the iterations to one, and it makes it a subdivision, uh, it makes a diagrid out of any mesh. It's a really, really wonderful tool. I love using this all the time. Uh, if we change the subdivisions, to one more. Essentially what it's doing is, is creating a diagrid by reducing the number of meshes by 50% or something like that. Maybe there's a better way to explain it. Anyways, so now we have our diagrid mesh. Great, so we can once again from this diagrid mesh here create a wireframe out of it and we can change the thickness and if you want to keep the original material we keep it and we change the index to make sure that it, 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 it that it uses a different material just leave this as a wireframe I'll duplicate this object get rid of the wireframe modifier and yeah so first let's apply the subsurface modifier let's just see what happens now it looks like a diagrid mesh, right? If we go in though, it's not. And that's because the decimate modifier hasn't been applied yet. So now if we apply it and we go back into edit mode, you can see it starts to look like the base mesh has been changed. So A to deselect, A to select everything. And we'll just do the inset faces again. We can either press I here, or excuse me, inset faces button here, or I'll just press I, which is the shortcut do something like that. It doesn't really matter what the result is because we can always refine it later. So I'll change the depth again to zero. And let's just make it something quite thick. All right, with these guys selected, I'll press inset again. I'll even escape. Did that work? Nope. So press inset. Just click anywhere, it doesn't matter where. Change the thickness to zero and now we'll change the depth. This time, we, let's say we go out. And now we're gonna create two material slots. The first one is the default one. The second one, put our glass material. Make sure you press assign. Just enable the transparency for the object. And here it is. And of course, with any of these, you can imagine that if we go and grab, for example, this object, duplicate it, and I add a loop cut here, I start to drag this face out, and maybe out this way, move it slightly up. Maybe add another 
couple more loop cuts and I'll grab these two edges move them up slightly in let's move these to something like that move that edge out okay and from here you can imagine we can we can really quickly have this looking like it's quite a well-defined object in this case I just use let's say the wireframe modifier for it now beyond this with the wireframe modifier if we add another subdivision surface it does this sort of effect where the edges it subdivides further now if we make this display smooth you can see and we change let's add a couple more subdivisions now we get a pretty cool effect as well which is what this mesh here is showing now if we change the crease edges and we play with the crease weight let's say 0.4 we can vary the level that the next subdivision effect has 0 0.7 0 0.8 let's make it something like this 0.2 right so now I'll just uncheck replace original go in here create two materials once again this time the first one will be glass second one we can leave blank because it uses a default material material offset is set just enable tra transparency uh, maybe I didn't check the material offset there you go for some reason it wasn't working alright so this is a very quick way with the wireframe modifier with insetting faces how we can continue to refine our geometry further from a very very simple base mesh Thank you very much and see you next time.